I have a $1,300 gift card to Guitar Center from a mistaken purchase. Any chance you would accept that as partial payment towards your guitar? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That's right, that's a real email I got from Jason here. He's wanted to purchase my Anaconda Burst Les Paul Standard, but he's got this darn Guitar Center gift card that he needs to use up. So first, a little bit of internet safety. Never, ever take gift card as a payment. Unless you can spend the gift card before you hand over your goods. All you need on a gift card is that little code on the back. They might give it to you, but they might go spend it before you do. So it's always good to make sure you have that gift card completely spent before you give them what they are technically paying for. So we had a real fun time hunting Guitar Center last time. You guys wiped out their inventory. That Silver Burst Deluxe is gone to my dismay. That SG Elegant caused fights and many others, but our budget's a little bit different this time. And honestly, I hope I find something today because I would love to help this guy out. So the first one at over our budget range is a 1976 Les Paul Custom. This one caught my attention because look, more than two photos, fantastic. And you just don't see too many 76 Tobacco Burst Customs out here. Now this one looks more like vintage Sunburst in this photo, but it might have more of a brown border in person. But it's not that this color is necessarily rare, it's just people tend to hold on to these. But okay, we do have a little bit of buckle rash on the back and a whole bunch of worming, but it actually appears to be in pretty good shape. Whoa, might need a level re crown maybe even a refright on that one and your truss rod's definitely getting towards limited adjustability but cool it is advertised correctly as a 76 custom i think at that price i'll leave it alone but check this out lpr7 for 3700 bucks generally that would not be seen as a good deal however this is one of those really unique ones in the fact that it's a wrap tail which normally an r7 means it has a gold finish on the top two humbuckers with the stop bar and abr1 bridge but this one kind of has r4 specs with the wrap tail but then has the 57 reissues humbucker just in the bridge position so it's one of those cool reissues with just one pickup which makes it a little bit more unique and rare so i'm not going to tell you this one is a steal but it is a pretty fair price. I could see that selling for up to $4,500 on Reverb. And you might say, hey, Trogly, $4,500 minus $3,700, that's $800 profit. Remember, there's sales tax on top of this. There's Reverb fees out of all of that. So realistically, you're about breaking even, but you would come up slightly on the upside if you were buying this strictly on resale and trying to get top value. But if you're a player out there looking for this guitar, very fair price. And in fact, while we're talking about gift cards, why don't we talk about this? So, Guitar Center, if you do have to shop there for some reason, there's a lot of guys in the similar situation as the viewer who messaged me. But if you go to a site like Gift Card Granny, now, again, be very careful on these sites, they're not all legit. But sometimes you can buy gift cards at a reduced rate on these. Doesn't look like there's any currently here. But here's a site I've never heard of called Card Cash. As long as they have a guarantee, you're usually okay. And if they let you pay with credit card, you also have another backup. But, for example, you can buy a $50 gift card for $48 or a $250 gift card for $240. Now I might say, that's just not worth the hassle, and sometimes I would agree with you, but let's say you're buying a $4,000 guitar. You would need eight of these. Would you yell at the shop that never haggles if they're gonna give you 160 bucks off? For example, if we go back here, that's exactly the situation once you add in sales tax. It takes it from being, okay, it's an all right deal to, all right, all right, it, it's worth going for. Sometimes you need just that, you know, $150 push to go for it. So I always personally keep that in mind as an option when buying on Guitar Center. Most other stores aren't big enough of a chain to actually be sold gift cards at a discount and have a black market for all that stuff. Well, let's see, what is our next one here? It's a 1977 SG Standard, they said. So I clicked on this because I thought maybe it was one of those SGR1 Active Artist guitars. But now that I see it, it is not one of those. So this is technically an SG Special. What made the Special different is it had a wider nut width than the standard ones of the era, and it came in the ebony finish. The standards did not outside of custom order, custom colors. So it's the dot inlays, slightly different neck, and the finish that makes this one special. They're actually quite nice guitars. But from the photos, this one looks really clean. Most times these specials are just beat all up. I mean, it's definitely got some wear, but that one's respectable. Looks like the tuners have been replaced with modern day ones, though. 25 is a tad on the high side, but could be worth it if it's as clean as it looks. Next up, we got a 73 Deluxe this time. But what caught my attention is this huge price drop, 23 down to 17. 
I've personally been wanting to document one of these because they're kind of interesting. They got P90 pickups. Everything else is pretty standard for the early 70s. It's within the top route era. They're not my favorite, but they are what they are. But just having an SG equipped with P90s is just kind of a cool concept. But ooh, looks like that one's got a headstock repair. And replace tuners, definitely players grade. I wonder if the headstock repair happened while in their possession. And that's why the price had to be cut? Personally, I'd tell you no more than 1200 on that. But shopping in this price range just shows you all the interesting early 70s SGs that aren't necessarily super popular, but are quirky in their own right. So this one's known as the SG100. I actually documented a 200, where essentially these were the new melody makers for that era. They had just gotten rid of the late 60s melody maker shape that looked really cool, and they replaced them with these really blocky horn looking ones. <laughs> And normally they have these really goofy looking single coil pickups, but there is this model right here that actually had a real P90, and they do look pretty cool when they still have the covers over the bridge and tailpiece. If you're looking for a Norlin era SG Jr., it's pretty much one of your only options, till the very end and start of the Henry J era. So this one's only got one photo, can't really tell you too much. I have seen them sell for as much as 2000 in good shape, but I'll just be real with you guys. There's better guitars out there for the money. This is more so you like quirky, weird, vintage things. It's fun to try things that are different type of guitar. It's not something you buy when it's your first guitar for 1600 bucks. But hey, speaking of technically Henry J era, this was probably well in the works before him, here's a 1986 SG Special 400 in a cool charcoal metallic finish. Man, that is a really exaggerated horn on that thing. <laughs> That's gotta just be their photo editing software that removed the background. But these are basically super strat SGs. You've got an HSS setup, you've got the Kaler trim on it, you've got the on-off toggles for each pickup so you can get any combination you want. One day I'll review one of these, but I I've just never been that attracted to them, and it looks like this one's had a heel break. So that's not something I would suggest. But hey, how about an N225? So I have reviewed and documented one of these. 1300 is a fair price for one that's in great condition. I do need to get one of these for my personal collection because it's just a, a weird quirky model. I remember not really liking it that much, but I think it's just because the Dirty Fingers pickup in this one was a little bit too hot sounding. But any guitar with a P90 humbucker setup is cool in my book. I just wish we didn't have to have this funky trem system on it too. But not that you can tell from this photo, it is a chambered out guitar. And it's got the Gibson Custom logo on the headstock and you're only paying a little over a thousand bucks. To be fair, I've seen people ask a lot more than that. That is an okay price. But let's keep moving on here. An L6S from 1976 at 1300 But it is the rare ebony finish. But what? What, what happened to our pick guard? It's just gone. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody replaced our chicken head knob with a different one. I wonder if they rewired it at the same time. Somebody's also replaced our tuners, but ebony L6S's are very hard to find in all original condition. No funny business at all. And this one's actually a cool one with an ebony fretboard. But hold the phone. Somebody's replaced our truss rod cover. I would be very leery of this one. You would want to remove that before you buy it just to make sure it's not one of the import versions of one of these that somebody's replaced the electronics in to make it look better. I mean, the serial number looks good, the construction's looking all right, but you can never be too careful on these. It's more likely that somebody just swapped out the truss rod cover when they took the pickguard off. But hey, if the Nighthawk 225 wasn't your style, what about the Nighthawk Standard? It's a limited edition, 1250, great condition. We've got some photos to go off of. Okay, it's got the quilty top to it. I have not demoed this version, the HSH setup. This isn't too bad of an option. I've seen these things, you know, usually range between 11 to 1600. I think this could be a $1,600 example if it has the case. And it says it comes with a case. Could be one to think about because I haven't reviewed it and it almost uses the entire gift card. So it only leaves a little bit of a risk out there. But what about this? They have a whole bunch of studios on their website for around 1300 bucks. They don't ever label them any further than that. But this one caught my attention because it's blue. So I was thinking, is that like a 1983 Bahama blue? But zooming in on our headstock, you can definitely tell that's probably 2016-ish era because it's got that really wide look to it. But that is a beautiful finish. And it was this aged poker chip that really made me think that maybe it was a custom color 80s one. 
And yes, it does appear I was correct. This is a 2016 Studio T. It came in a whole bunch of different colors. Some of these are actually pretty cool. Standard wine red doesn't do much for me. White doesn't really look that good with this color of a fretboard. The black looks nice with the darker board. Kind of an interesting Inverness green. That silver sparkle is phenomenal. The red's a bit too boisterous. I've never been a big fan of the perimeter bursts, but that blue definitely stands out. So you can see what people ask on Reverb, 1000 to 1500. I would imagine that blue one could be worth up to 1500 for somebody who's looking for that exact color, because I don't see any on the market right now. So I'll leave that for one of you guys who's inevitably going to swoop it up now. <laughs> And this was another one that I clicked on because it's like, that is not a finish I've seen. Again, just labeled as a regular random studio, about 900 bucks. We've got one kind of blurry photo <laughs> to go off of here. I mean, what this looks like is one of the first edition robot guitars, but even that finish is slightly different from that. Looks like somebody's modified it with a chrome pick guard. We definitely have non-stock tuners on here. It says Les Paul Custom on the truss rod cover. It's possible this started life just as silver and somebody added the blue border to it. It could be not original paint. That's impressive that they actually had that in the description because normally Guitar Center does not buy refinished or like heavily modified things. At least that's how they were about five years ago when I tried to trade something in like that. And if you take them something like that, they just say, nah, we're not buying that. So now we need to know, does it have a headstock repair? Does it have other things that is hiding underneath the paint? And then the last one that stood out to me was a used Gibson The Hawk, part of the All American series. It's 700 bucks. We've got one blurry photo. One good photo, okay. And a couple of additional ones. So let's talk. The Hawk. Remember those Night Hawks we were just looking at? This is a stripped down version, kind of similar to the Firebird Zero series, but it's what they did in the late 90s to get affordable USA guitars on the market. So to simplify things, you've got a wrap tail piece. You've got two humbuckers instead of having the middle single coil and whatnot. They simplified your control layout a bit. There's Fruit of the Loom signature versions of these guitars out there, but it looks like this is getting the common late 90s lacquer peel. However, it's normally not exactly like that. That almost looks like lacquer melting, but what's likely happening? here is somebody's picked away at the edges because you can see how it's lifting up in these areas so that's something you kind of have to deal with these are not super popular but i think if you could take that home for 600 bucks you would have a fun guitar okay so to highlight the best deals we found tonight was this one pickup r7 at 3700 this was an okay price for the n225 and the nighthawk standard at 1250 because revisiting that, I mean, there's this one, which is comparable, but in the Chicago blue finish, which is slightly more desirable, it's at $17.99. Heck, that's not a bad deal at all for a 1992 version. In fact, really good. There must be something wrong. But Reverb doesn't have enough documented sales. All right, for the sake of great closure on this video and making a deal happen, let's do it.